Will you mind being looked after, Tracy? That's what it means being Mr. and Mrs., doesn't it? They don't say Mrs. and Mr. <laughs> but you need looking after too, James. Let's just look after each other. There's a red car coming up past behind. Do you want me to lose him? No, let him go. We've got all the time in the world. You Only Live Twice by Ian Fleming Dramatised for radio by Michael Bakewell With Michael Jaston as James Bond And Clive Merrison as Tanaka It's 007 He's going slowly to pieces He's drinking too much and losing a lot of money At one of these new gambling clubs He's on the verge of becoming a pretty serious security risk. What do you expect? Confirmed womanizer suddenly falls in love? Partly, I suspect, because the woman was a bird with a wing down and needed his help. Mm. So he marries her, and within a few hours, she's shot dead by some master criminal in a mad act of vengeance. What did you say his name was? Blofeld. Ernst Stavro Blofeld. Mm. When Bond came to see me, he told me he wasn't interested in anything anymore. Not his job, not even his life. He blames himself for her death. Um, neither you nor I have ever had to carry a burden like that. At least I haven't. No, I. Well, not like that, anyway. So we don't know how we'd react under it. Have you tried him on any really tough assignments in the last few months? Two. He bungled them both. On one, he nearly got himself killed. And on the other, he made a mistake that nearly killed everybody else. He never made mistakes before. Now, suddenly, he's become accident prone. Uh, why did you ask to see me? to confirm my own worst fears. You'll have to go. Honourable discharge. Well, isn't that a bit harsh? I've got no room in my section for a lame brain, whatever his past record, or whatever excuses you psychologists can find for him. Pension, of course. Try to find him a job. One of the top security organisations might take him on. You'll be losing one of your best men. Used to be. Isn't any longer. I still can't help feeling that if he were placed in a really desperate situation, he might get himself back on the rails. Give him one more chance. If it'll help, I'll take the responsibility. What sort of chance? I don't know much about your line of business, but haven't you got something really sticky, some apparently hopeless assignment you can give him, but something that's desperately important at the same time, something that really matters to his country? Can't you dream up a mission that would put to the test everything that's in him? Can I refill your glass, sir? You certainly can. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Blonde hair that falls across her face, a beautifully poised walk, a very presentable bottom... A year ago, I'd have been after her like a shot. And now, I just can't feel a thing. But then I can't feel anything about anything. The zip's gone out of life. No excitement, no desires. Perhaps I'm suffering from an adrenaline deficiency. You're washed up, James. And that must be Mary Goodnight calling me home across the sands of Dee. Just time to finish the bottle, I think. For God's sake, James, where have you been? Em sent for you nearly an hour ago. Sitting in the cafe at Queen Mary's Rose Garden. What a peculiar place to choose. I went to look at the roses, thinking about my retirement. Em wants you. He rang again half an hour ago. Who's Em? Oh, snap out of it, James. Your tie's crooked, and your hair's all over the place. Here, use my comb. Thanks. You're a good girl, good night. Must look my best on the scaffold. Will you come and lend a hand on my chicken farm? You've been taking your time. Afternoon, Miss Moneypenny. He's waiting for you. Go straight in. Afternoon, sir. Sit down, James. You know why I've sent for you. I can guess. You can have my resignation. What the hell are you talking about? It's not your fault that the 007 section's been idle for so long. Anyway, I'm taking you out of there. Then if it's all the same with you, sir, I'd still like to put in my resignation. I'm not interested in staff work, I'm afraid, sir. Who the hell do you think you're talking to? Who the devil do you think is running this show? I'm terribly sorry, sir. 
I thought I'd been letting the side down lately. Now listen to me, James. I'm giving you acting promotion to the diplomatic section. Four-figure number and a thousand a year extra pay. I'll be leaving for Japan inside a week. The chief of staff is handling all the arrangements personally. It's top secret. I see, sir. There's not even a file on the case. That's how important it is. I thought you'd called me in to give me the job. Why choose me? For the simple reason that the job's impossible. Perhaps that's going a bit too far. Let's say totally improbable of success. Improbable? You're no stranger to situations like that. The only difference here is that there won't be any strong arm stuff, none of the gunplay you pride yourself on so much. It can just be a question of your wits and nothing else. Can you fill me in in any more detail? Have to, as there's nothing written down. Do you know anything about cryptography? Only the bare bones. It's a subject I've preferred to keep clear of. Better that way in case the opposition never got hold of me. Quite right. The point is that the Japanese have become past masters at it. They've got the right mentality for finicky problems in letters and numbers. They can crack anything. And for the last year, they've been reaching the cream of the Soviet traffic from Vladivostok and Oriental Russia. Diplomatic, naval, air force, the lot. So what's the problem? The problem is none of it's coming our way. It's all going straight to the CIA. And they're not passing it on to us? Not where the Pacific is concerned. They regard that as their private preserve. They're worried about our security. Can't blame them. I'm equally worried about theirs. But where do I come in on all this, sir? There's a man in Tokyo called Tanaka. Tiger Tanaka, head of their secret service. I can't remember what they call it, some unpronounceable Japanese rubbish. He's quite a man. First at Oxford, a formidable mind, and a highly trained war machine to the bargain. He's the chap who has control of the stuff we want. You've got to go out there and get it off him. But how on earth am I going to That's do that? That's your problem. So you do see why you're unlikely to succeed. He's in fief to the CIA. He probably doesn't think much of us. People don't these days. Is there anyone out there who can brief me? We don't have a station in Japan at present. You'll be working with the Australians. I'm told they've got a good man in Tokyo. Section J says so too. Anyway, that's how it is. If anyone can bring it off, you can. Care to have a go, James? Yes, sir. I'd like to have a try. Good. You'll be meeting up with an Australian chap called Richard Lovelace Henderson, generally known as Dicko. He'll give you a basic briefing on what Japan's all about. It's not all cherry blossom by any means. <laughs> Are you for the International Laundry Convention? No. Sorry you've been troubled. Have a nice uh, day. Excuse me, sir. Are you here for the food processing? No. Excuse me, are you Mr. Fleming? No, I'm not. Oh, pardon me, I'm sure. I'm looking for a Mr. Fleming. God, uh, what a Fleming place. Why do they have to make such a bloody noise about everything? If this is the mysterious East, give me Sochi Hall Street on a wet Saturday. But I think rescue is at hand. The character who's bulging out of his shirt and sweating like a pig could very well be Dicko Henderson. <coughs> Mr. Bond. Oh, glad to meet your mind, Henderson. Heaven be praised. How did you know who I was? Hey, you're the only Tommy on the plane. Is it always like this? <laughs> it's taken me the best part of an hour to get one sodding suitcase through customs. What a goddamn place. Ah, that's my boy. That's the way to greet the East. I got a car outside. Sooner we get out of this adjective or madhouse, the better. I'm taking you to your hotel first, the Okura. <laughs> it's the latest of the Western ones. American tourists got murdered in the Royal Orient the other day. We don't want to lose you all that soon. <laughs> Doesn't look like the most attractive city in the world. Why are we driving on the left? Oh, God knows. Bloody Japs do everything the wrong way. Probably read the instruction books wrong. The light switches go up instead of down. The taps turn to the left. <laughs> they even race their horses clockwise instead of anti-clockwise like civilized people. <laughs> Ah, it's got its points when you know your way around. It's really quite exhilarating. Got to know the lingo, though, when to bow and take your shoes off and so on. Underneath the stiff collars and the striped pants, there's still plenty of the old samurai tucked away. Don't think I'm paranoid or anything, but that blue car's been on our tail ever since we left the airport. <laughs> no, don't let it worry you. It's only old Tiger keeping tabs on us. It's typical. I told him you were staying at the Okura, but he wants to make sure for himself. If you find one of his men breathing down your neck in bed tonight, or, or a girl if you're lucky, just talk to them politely and they'll bow and hiss themselves out. Thanks for the tip. 
Yeah, I'll drop you off at the hotel, then we can go and get down to some serious drinking. There's a little place called Melodies where we're bound to find a quiet corner where we can't be overheard. I'll fix it up for you to meet Tiger tomorrow morning at 11. I'll pick you up and, and take you there. The Bureau of All Asia Folkways. I won't describe it to you, it'd spoil it. Hey, hey Chrysanthemum, can, can you turn that down? I can't, I can't hear myself drink. Now, I don't really know what you're here for. There's a spate of top secret cables from Melbourne. The ambassador doesn't want to know anything about it, and I don't want to know anything either. That way, you're the only one who gets powdered bamboo in his coffee. You shove that bottle over, will you? Oh, just a minute. What oh, the damnation's just a bastard, the bloody bastard! Take it easy, Dicko. What's bitten you? You stupid bomby idiot. We've been mic'd. The bloody Tanaka's mic'd us. Here, under the table. See that little wire down the leg? And you see that wingy over at the bar? That's one of Tiger's men. He dresses them all like little CIA gentlemen. Damn good mind to go over and call a bastard. Well, if we're being mic'd, all this will make sweet listening for Tanaka tomorrow. Oh, what the hell? The old bastard knows what I think of him. It's really you he wants to size up, and I don't mind if he hears me saying so. Do you hear that, Tiger? Bludger! <laughs> That's a great Australian insult. You can use it any way you like, but in general it means pervert, ponce, liar and traitor with no redeeming feature. Yeah, I hope your seaweed sticks in your gullet at breakfast tomorrow when you hear what I think of you. <laughs> All right, we'll put an end to this little game. <laughs> Silly bastard. You ought to know we're not proposing to assassinate the Emperor. Hey, uh, Lotus Blossom, bring us another flask of sake. Okay. I gather you want to get some high-powered gen out of Tiger without the CIA knowing anything about it, right? Hmm? Well, it's going to be a dicey business. Tiger's a career man with a career mind, though on the surface he's 100% Demokarazu. He is a deep one. He's very deep and deep. Sake, Henderson, oh. Sam. Thanks, honey. And what sort of a chap is he? Is he your enemy or your friend? Oh, uh, both. More of a friend, probably. At least I guess so. <laughs> I amuse him as CIA pals, don't you? He looses up with me. We share in the delights of samsara, that's wine and women. Great man for the little ladies. I managed to keep him out of two marriages. That's, that's the trouble with Tiger. He always wants to marry them. He's paying alimony to three already, so he has acquired an on with regard to me as an obligation. Almost as important in the Japanese way of life as face. When you have an on, you're not happy till you've discharged it. And if a man makes you a present of a salmon, you mustn't repay him with a shrimp. It's got to be an equally large salmon, larger if possible. Well, Tiger's on toward me is very powerful one, very difficult to discharge. He's paying off a slice of it by accepting your presence here and giving you an interview so soon after your arrival. Could have taken you weeks. Is it my imagination, or are these bottles getting smaller? <laughs> it's all in the mind, Dicko. <sighs> What you've got to get into your head is that the Japanese are a separate human species. They've only been operating as a civilized people in the debased way we talk about it in the West for 50, uh, at the most, 100 years. Just because people play baseball and wear bowler hats doesn't mean they're, quote, civilized, unquote. And just to show you I'm getting rather tight, not drunk, mind. The world is going to reap the father and mother of a whirlwind by the, quote, liberation, unquote, of the colonial peoples. Give them a thousand years, they might make it, but give them ten, there's no chance. You're only taking away their blowpipes and giving them machine guns. Just you wait for the first one to start crying to high heaven for nuclear fission. That doesn't sound exactly Demokarasu, Dicko. I fornicate, as the man said, upon thy Demokarasu. Hey, Madam Butterfly, let's have another flask of sake, and you make sure it's a full one this time. Dicko, don't you think that maybe Listen you here, you pommy pufter. Don't give me any of that liberal crap. For God's sake, Dicko, let's go and get some food. What's all this pommy pufter rubbish? I'll reserve judgment till later. We'll go and eat at a place where we can get a few serious bottles of plonk to match, and then we'll go on to the house of total delight. And after that, I'll give you my honest verdict, honestly, come by. I wouldn't like Tiger to think I was saddling him with a pufter. Aren't we a bit early? Oh, better to give ourselves a bit of time. Tiger doesn't like to be kept waiting. Oh, boy, did I lay one on last night. You were going it a bit. <laughs> did I talk a lot of crap, or did you seem to recollect one of us did? You kept on calling me a pommy pufter. <laughs> but you were quite friendly about it. No offence given or taken. Now, out you get. This is it. The Bureau of All Asian Folkways. OK, you can keep the change. Look, looks like some kind of museum. You mean this is Tanaka's HQ? As the man said, you ain't seen nothing yet. Just follow me. The door over there. Coordination department. Mm. 
And nobody seems very concerned about us. What do they do in all these little offices? Coordinate, I guess. Through here. International relations. I see what you mean. Visual presentation. Documentation. Good morning, Mr. Henderson. Morning. This is where the cover tape is off. Up till now, all those people really were researching Asian folkways. This way. But these here are part of Tiger's outside staff. This is where we'd be politely turned back if we'd lost our way. Now, this is us. Proposed extension to documentation department. But where's the construction work? There isn't any. It's just a front. What you heard was the tape recording. Now, take a look at this. It's what they call a nightingale floor. Relic of the old days when people wanted to be warned of intruders. Take a step forward. <laughs> See what I mean? I can't imagine anyone getting across this unheard. You notice a little spy hole that's flown open on the door opposite? Ah, oh, good morning, Mr. Henderson. I brought this gentleman to see Tanaka-san. He is expected. You're on your own now, sport. Tiger will send you back to your hotel. See ya. Tell Mother I died game. Through that, sir. Doesn't seem to be an exit. It's a lift. Quite a box of tricks Tiger's worked out for himself. The oriental nest of boxes. What next? It's an underground station, but not a sign of life anywhere. A sinister looking little chap, beckoning. This way, Commander. It doesn't seem I've got much choice but to follow. Prefabricated offices. Is there no end to all this? You are sent by Mr. Henderson. Please to come this way. Commander Bond. My dear Commander, good morning. It is a great pleasure to meet you. Uh, come and sit down. Thank you. Ah, how do you like my offices? Rather different from your own chiefs, no doubt. But the new underground will take another ten years to complete, and there is little office space in Tokyo. It crossed my mind to make use of this disused station. It is quiet, it is private, and it costs us next to nothing. Down here we have to count our pennies. I suppose it is the same with you, hmm? Under ten million a year doesn't go far when there's the whole world to cover. Well, at least in the last ten years you have saved money by cutting down your activities in this part of the world. Yes. We rely on the CIA to do our work here for us. They're most efficient and helpful. Ah. Are they as helpful as they were under the previous regime? Uh, nowadays they're rather more inclined to regard the Pacific as their own back garden. From which you want to borrow the mowing machine without them knowing. <laughs> The manufacturer's trademark for this particular machine is Magic 44. Ah, that is the name you have given to our cipher-breaking organization. Our code name, yes. Ah, yes. A most valuable implement of many uses. I can understand that your country would wish to have the services of this implement. A case in point is an example of its capabilities which came into my hands this morning. Ah. Oh. May I beg, beg you, on oath, not to reveal to anyone what you are about to read. If you insist, Mr. Tanaka. I am afraid I must, Commander. So be it. To all stations of grade two and above to be deciphered by addressees personally and then destroyed, text begins. In amplification of number one's speech to the Supreme Soviet, this confirms possession of the 200 megaton weapon and that a test firing will take place on September the 20th at high altitude in the Novaya Zemlya area. Stop. For information, the delivery of one such weapon by ICM beyond London would destroy all life and property south of a line drawn between Newcastle and Carlisle. 
This fact will shortly be employed as the teeth in a diplomatic démarche designed to achieve the removal of all American bases in Britain itself. Stop. Surely it's a mistake to keep this material from us. We have a treaty of friendship and a trade treaty with you. Do you not regard the withholding of this vital information as a dishonourable act? Honour is a very serious word in Japan, Commander. Well, would it not be more dishonourable to break our word to our good American friends? Hmm? There is, of course, in this instance, an alternative route for this information to reach your government. But you put me on my oath. Commander, I was very happy in England before the war. Your people were very good to me. I repaid them in an unworthy fashion. I, I played youth and the heat of a war that I thought would bring great glory to my country. I was mistaken. We were defeated. The expiation of that dishonor is a large matter, a matter for the youth of this country. But I have my own private accounts to balance. I am in great debt to your country. This morning I have betrayed a state secret to you. I fully realize the importance of this piece of paper to Britain. You remember the contents? Exactly, I think. Huh? And you are on your honor not to communicate it elsewhere? Yes. And that's all? Ah, for the time being, I need time to think things over. Honor is a pattern of behavior, Commander. The bamboo must bend to the breeze, but equally, the cedar must bend to the typhoon. The meaning of this is simply that sometimes duty is more compelling than any words. Huh? Call on me again tomorrow. Oh, but that's fantastic. You obviously hit it off with him, champ. He thinks the world of you, too. <laughs> But do you think he's on the level? It seems too easy. A tiger would consider it dishonorable to leech up the garden path and then pull the rug out from under you. Something's definitely cooking in the background. He can't be doing this simply out of a sense of honor. You don't understand the Japanese mentality. This on he's got in respect of Britain is a huge factor in your favor. If you get any more gifts like the last one, you'll be piling up a great heap of on in respect of tiger. And if it comes to striking a bargain, I hope you've got a pretty massive present up your sleeve so that the arm on both sides is more or less equally balanced. None of this salmon and shrimp business. Have got? Can do? I'm not so sure. I have given you a new name. Commander James Bond is perhaps a little too formal. Huh? I shall call you Bond of Sun. Huh? Is that acceptable? Perfectly. And what do I call you? You call me Tiger. And may I ask how you acquired that name? I was born in the year of the Tiger. Oh. And you happen to know what year I was born in? Yes, I do, bondo -san. You were born in the year of the Rat. As a fair trader, has your country got to offer in exchange for the full use of magic for thought? We have a most important intelligence network in China known as the Macau Blue Route. The fruits of this source would be placed entirely oh, at your disposal. I'm very much afraid that I have bad news for you, Bondo San. Blue Route has been penetrated by my organization almost since its inception. <laughs> what other goods had you in mind for our exchange? We have many other commodities. But, my dear Tiger, would it not be a good idea, once your mind is made up, for you to pay a visit to London and inspect the shelves for yourself? I'm sure my chief would be honoured to receive you. You do not possess full powers of negotiation? No, that would be impossible. Our security is such that even I have not full knowledge of all our merchandise. I'm only in a position to pass on to my chief the substance of what you say, or to render any other personal services you might ask of me. Personal services? Ah, oh, that is a possibility. I must get to know you, Bondo san. Uh, permit me to invite you to a geisha party at the House of Grey Pearl tomorrow evening. Oh boy, you're really into it now. It's a great honor. A party in a geisha house? And it'll cost Tiger a small fortune. You better put a good face on the whole thing. This could be the breakthrough you've been waiting for. But he knows already that I've nothing to offer him. Well, then it's even more important that you keep your hand up. 
But what's so special about a party in a geisha house? Well, the oriental seat is a kind of art form, like the uh, tea ceremony or, or flower arrangement. For a foreigner, it's more like trying to entertain a lot of unknown children to a nursery tea with a very strict governess looking on. And what do the girls actually do? Well, the uh, high-class ones can sing and paint and uh, tell humorous stories and compose elaborate verses. And the ones who aren't high-class? I mean, do they actually... <laughs> with a bit of luck? <laughs> uh, Tiger will probably arrange a pillow geisha for you. But you'll have to sit through a lot of chatter and play games before you get around to the real thing. Hey. What sort of games? Uh, word games, music games, games of skill like scissor cut paper. Oh, scissors cut paper, paper wrapped stone, stone blunt scissors. That's it. You make a kind of hammer gesture with your closed fist twice and then show your hand on the third strike. That's right, and don't forget, the Japanese take their games very seriously indeed. <laughs> That's a cheat. You agreed that if I won, it would be a real kiss on the mouth, Trembling Leaf, at the very least. On the mouth? On the mouth. Go ahead, my child. <laughs> ah, bon d'orsan. I will not challenge you to this ridiculous game, and I promise you in advance that you will not win. All right, Tiger. But first, let's have some more sake. And not in these ridiculous thimbles. I've drunk five flasks of the stuff, and the effect is about the same as one double martini. He know how to hold his drink, but he won't be much use to trembling beef if he goes on like this. <laughs> you have gained much face, Bondosa. It is only the sumo wrestlers who drink sake in these quantities without showing it. But Great Pearl might be right. The sake, master. Thank you, trembling leaf. Drink deep, Bondosa. And then we will begin. Your health, Tiger. <laughs> if I beat him, he will lose face in front of all these women. If I lose, I shall lose face in front of him. So do I play to win or lose. But it's as difficult to play to lose as to play to win. And does it really matter? Three games of three. Right. Ha! Paper wraps stone. Stone, blunts, scissors. I've got you. Paper wraps stone. First game to me. <laughs> ah, second game. Paper. Paper. Ah, again. Stone, blunts, scissors. Scissors, cut paper. Stone. stone. Again. <laughs> ah, stone, blunts, scissors. My game. One all. Last game. Are you ready? Fire away. Stone blunt scissors. Paper wrap stone. I drink to your victory, Bondosan. Sake, Bondosan. Thank you, Trembling Leaf. Your health, Tiger. Ah. And now, Trembling Leaf, it's time for you to give me another kiss. On the mouth? On the mouth. <laughs> bon san I have matters to discuss with you. Will you do me the honor of coming to my house for a nightcap? Of course, Tiger. Nothing would give me greater pleasure. Huh? Good night, Trembling Leaf. Another time, perhaps. Good night, bon san Not too noisy for you, I hope. In a little while, the traffic will die away, and we will be left with the sounds of the harbor, which I find soothing. <laughs> e sake is warm enough. Perfect, thank you. Ah. Then listen to what I have to say to you. Ever since the beginning of the westernization of Japan, there have from time to time been foreigners who have come to this country and settle here. They have for the most part been uh, cranks and scholars. But there is one such person who has revealed himself to be an eccentric of the most devilish nature. The man is a monster. <laughs> huh? no, you, you may laugh, but this man is no less than a fiend in human form. I have met many bad men in my time, Tiger, and generally they've been slightly mad. 
Is that the case in this instance? Oh, very much the reverse. In the opinion of our highest scholars and savants, he is a scientific research worker and collector, probably unique in the history of the world. What does he collect? He collects death. A collector of death? You mean he kills people? No, no, Bondo son. It is not as simple as that. He persuades, or rather, entices people to kill themselves. I had better begin at the beginning. In January of this year, there entered this country quite legally a gentleman by the name of Dr. Guntram Shatterhand. He was accompanied by his wife. They had Swiss passport, and the doctor described himself as a horticulturalist and botanist specializing in subtropical species. He told the authorities he was prepared to spend no less than one million pounds on establishing an exotic garden or park in this country, which he would stock with a, a priceless collection of rare, fully grown plants and shrubs from all over the world. Quite a proposition. Well, his offer was enthusiastically accepted by the government, who, in return, granted the good doctor a ten-year residence permit, a very rare privilege. Hmm. Now, the doctor took a fancy to a half-ruined castle in Kayusho, a southern island in an extremely remote corner of the coast, not far from Fukuoka, a gigantic edifice with a monumental surrounding wall which was just what was required for the privacy of the undertaking. Hmm. An additional reason for the doctor's choice of site was that the property was highly volcanic and furnished with many geysers which would provide all the year round the temperature needed for the tropical plants and trees. And what has your Dr. Shatterhand done with this castle? He has created what I can only describe as a garden of death. Garden of death? Listen, this Dr. Shatterhand has filled this famous park of his uniquely with poison vegetation. The Guyana poison tree, East Indian snakewood, yellow oleander, sandbox tree, every kind of deadly plant known to man. The lakes and streams are stocked with poisonous fish, and the place is infested with snakes, scorpions, and poisonous spiders. He and this wife of his, who is quite hideously ugly, are not harmed by these things because whenever they leave the castle, he wears a suit of armor from the 17th century and she wears some kind of protective clothing. Dr. Shatan's garden sounds indeed a lovesome thing, God what? What's the nature of the good doctor's exercise? <sighs> Along with our national concept of honor goes a tradition of expiation by death. If a student fails an exam, he has brought dishonor on his ancestors. He kills himself, and the same applies throughout our society. 25,000 Japanese commit suicide every year. But I still don't see what all this has got to do with friend Shatterhand and his magic garden. Oh, everything. The garden has become the most desirable site for suicides in the whole of Japan. It has everything. A ride on our famous Romance Express to Kyoto, a boat trip across our beautiful inland sea, and when you get to Fukuoka, you walk to the awe-inspiring battlements of this mysterious castle of death. Climb them, or smuggle yourself in on a provision card, and then a last delicious, rumative walk, perhaps hand in hand with your lover, through the beautiful groves, and finally, the great gamble. Will your death be easy or painful? Will a Russell's viper strike at your legs as you walk the silent, well-raked paths? Will some kindly, deadly dew fall upon you during the night as you rest under this or that gorgeous tree? But what does your good doctor say to all this? He tells everyone that he is horrified. He has erected stern notices of warning with scowls and crossbones on them. They act only as advertisements. He has even gone to the expense of flying a, a high helium balloon from the roof of his castle. The hanging streamers threaten trespassers with prosecution, but alas, for the doctor's precautions, the balloon serves only to beckon. Here is death. Come and get it. So, why don't you arrest him? Burn the place down? Uh, arrest him for what? The man has done nothing wrong. 
Oh, if anyone is to blame, it is the Japanese. And inevitably, more and more people will be attracted to the castle of death. We have got to put a stop to it. What have you done so far? Oh, one month ago, I sent one of my best men into this place to find out what was going on. One week later, bondo -san, this man was recovered from the sea near the castle of death. He was blinded and in delirium. All the lower half of his body was terribly burnt. Sounds like a horrible dream. So what did you do? Oh, what was that to do? I did nothing except apologize to my superiors. I waited for an honorable solution to present itself. I waited for you to come. Me? Huh. You were sent. It might have been another. Tiger, it's getting late. Time for bed. Let's talk about this tomorrow. Of course, I'll give you any advice I can. Sit down, Bondosan. You will not be going back to your hotel. From now on, you are under my personal orders. Is that understood? What in God's name are you talking about, Tiger? In my office the other day, you made a significant statement. You said words to the effect that in exchange for the intelligence obtained by our cipher-breaking service, you were empowered to carry out any personal services that I might require of you. I didn't say I was empowered. I meant that I would do anything for you on my personal responsibility. That is quite good enough. I took you out of your word, and I requested an audience of the Prime Minister. He instructed me to proceed, but to regard the matter as a state secret known only to himself and me, and of course, to you. Now, come on, Tiger, stop beating about the bush. What is it you want me to do? You are to enter the castle of death and slay the dragon within. <laughs> the sark has gone to your head. Why should I be the one to get rid of it? Well, for reasons that must be obvious even to you, his assassination cannot be carried out by a Japanese. But I've got nothing against the man. <laughs> that is of no importance. He has already killed 500 of his fellow creatures. And in any case, Bondo san, you will do this in exchange for magic for fall. But I bespotted long before I got anywhere near him. Can you think of anyone who looks less like a Japanese than I do? Well, by the time we have finished with you, Bondo san, you will be able to fall even me. Eh? We have talked enough. The first step in your transformation will be accomplished in the bathhouse. Excuse, please. Just what do you think you're doing? Taking off your trousers. And what happens then? You will lie in a box over a charcoal fire. Then I shall clean your body very carefully. Uh -huh. Then I shall administer a black dye to your hair and give you a haircut in the Japanese style. And after that? I shall give you a massage, mm. and I shall apply a dark dye all over your body. And after that? You will sleep, and I shall wake you with breakfast, mm. ham and eggs. Then I shall dress you as a Japanese gentleman. Ah, not bad. Not bad at all. Ah, she has done her work well. Your eyebrows are quite convincing. <laughs> I don't care for the trousers much. Mm. Ah, oh, they are uh, a little loose in the fork, but the behinds of my countrymen are inclined to hang low. So, what's the next step? We will take the express to Kamagori on the south coast and the evening hydrofoil across Ise Bay to the fishing port of Toba. There, we will spend the night. Aren't we taking our time, rather? It will be a slow journey to Fukuoka, because I want to educate you in Japanese custom so that you will make as few mistakes as possible when the time comes. The train leaves at midday. The Kamagori Express is ready to leave. Please close all doors and stand clear, please. Lesson number one, bondo -san. Never make way for women. No. Trample them underfoot if necessary. Women have no priority in this country. Yes, master. And do not make Western-style jokes when you are my pupil. Huh? Now, let us go and get something to eat and drink in the buffet car. All that suntory you forced on me last night is crying out for the skin of the dog that bit me. The hair, Tiger. One hair would not be enough. I need the whole skin. Somebody snitched my wallet. It must have been in the buffet car. That's not possible. Possible or not, it's gone. There was a thick-set guy in a black leather hat. I'm sure he jostled me. Ah, that is most unusual in Japan. But it would be a mistake to call the conductor. We do not wish to draw attention to ourselves. I regret the incident, Bondo-san. I hope you will forget it. Of course. There's nothing. 
I shall make up for your loss by standing you a magnificent meal when we get to Kamagori. That man in the buffet car, I'm sure I saw him again in the crowd as we got off the train. Ah, uh, what of it? Everyone has to get off at Kamagori. Forget about him. I have ordered the speciality of this place. Lobster. Sounds great. Uh, it is not the custom of this country to consume sake in a single gulp. But the uh, grossness of your drinking habits will fit in very well with your future identity. What am I supposed to be? A coal miner from Fukuoka. Hmm. There are many tall men in that profession. Your hands are not rough enough, but we will say that you push the truck underground. Hmm. You are too stupid to yield a pick. You are deaf and dumb. You will carry this card with you always. Zumbo the Oshi. Deaf and dumb. Hmm. Ah, and here is our lobster. Looks delicious. But it's raw. Of course. It will be a test of your dexterity with the chopsticks. Good God, Tiger, the damn thing's alive! Oh, keep your voice down. Really, Bondo-san, you are a great disappointment to me. This is a very great Japanese delicacy. Eat it up without being squeamish. Forgive me. It simply crossed my mind that honorable Japanese lobster might not like being eaten alive. Thank you for correcting the unworthy thought. You will soon become accustomed to the Japanese way of life. It's their way of death that's got me a little bit puzzled. Would you be so kind as to pass the seaweed? We are going to take a look at the Central Mountaineering School. It is one of the secret training establishments of my service. It doesn't sound very secret. Oh, it is just a name. It's an old fortified castle where my agents are trained in one of the most dreaded arts in Japan. Ningutsu, the art of stealth or invisibility. You will see men walk across the surface of water, walk up walls and across ceilings, and many other tricks besides. I think you may learn something from this place. I'm sure I shall. I have never approved of agents carrying guns and other obvious weapons. My men are expected to be able to kill without them. All they may carry is a staff and a length of thin chain which can easily be explained away if they are caught. You understand? Tiger, we've been following this road for at least ten minutes, and all that time there's been a motorcyclist on our tail. Have you noticed? Hmm? Oh, he is perhaps a speed cop. If he is anyone else, he has chosen a bad time and place. When we reach the castle, I will send a detachment of my men out in search of him. They will certainly track him down. These men are practicing an assault on the castle wall. It is nearly 200 feet high and offers few natural footholds. They're scrabbling up it like black spiders. What's the significance of the black costume and the hoods over their faces? Ah, they're wearing traditional ninja clothing. But in reality, the attack would take place at nighttime. They would be virtually invisible. Ah, in a few days' time, you will be doing something very much the same. Ah, the man on the end is the weakest of the team, huh? You can see how awkward he is. Poor bugger. Ah, oh, it is of no account. The instructor would have failed him anyway. Now, let us go down into the courtyard. Once the men have scaled the wall, they will use bujutsu on the defenders, huh? Fighting with the stave. Those sticks certainly carry a god almighty thwack. I wouldn't like to be on the receiving end. They look as if they're fighting for their lives. They are. Ah, observe carefully, Bondo-san. You may have to depend on the war you saw for your life. Anybody would think they were seeing their relatives off before crossing the Atlantic instead of a pleasure trip. Ah, to the Japanese mind, one journey is much the same as another. What's the object of this particular exercise, anyway? What am I supposed to be learning from all this? Ah, I thought that a little excursion on the inland sea would cleanse our minds. But since you are clearly in a learning mood, we will go down to our cabin, drink a little sake, and I shall do what I can to correct your boorish ignorance of Japanese culture. Okay, then. They're ready for culture, far away. Uh, what do you know about Basho? Nothing whatsoever. Sounds fascinating. What is it? Oh, not an, uh, an it of any sort. 
Basho was a great classical poet who lived in the 17th century. He perfected the form of the haiku. It is a verse of 17 syllables. For instance, in the bitter radish that bites into me, I feel the autumn wind. Huh. Does not that say anything to you? Well... Oh, this, this, this. In the fisherman's hut, mingle with dried shrimp. Crickets are chirping. I can't quite get the hang of that one. Huh? Do you not catch the still life quality of these verses? The flash of insight into nature? Huh? Ah, now, do me a favor, Bondosan. Make a haiku for me yourself. I'm sure you could get the hang of it. After all, you must have had some education. Mostly in Latin and Greek. But give me time to think about it. And pour me another glass of sake. It might give me inspiration. Uh. This is the best I can do, Tiger. Uh, read it to me. You only live twice. Once when you were born, and once when you look death in the face. Ah, oh, that, that is excellent, Bondosan. Ah, oh, too many syllables, but a most honorable attempt. Hmm, most sincere. <laughs> you are thinking, perhaps, of your mission. Perhaps. Is it weighing on your mind? The practical difficulties are bound to do so. I've swallowed the moral principles involved. Things being as they are, I have to accept that the end justifies the means. Even killing in cold blood. Then you are not concerned for your own safety? Not particularly. I've had worse jobs to do. Uh, you do not appear to value your life as highly as most Westerners. Is there a reason for that? Not that I can think of. But no more of your Japanese brainwashing. Pass me the sake. And tell me what happens next. Uh, tomorrow you are to leave the nest. But first we shall drive out to Fukuoka to talk to the chief of police. What kind of man is he? Who? Oh. Your chief of police at Fukuoka. Oh, conscientious, unimaginative. And he has absolutely no sense of humor, so don't try any of your silly jokes. <laughs> Tiger, I don't want you to think I'm paranoid, but that motorcyclist is back on our tail again. And I could swear we were being shadowed on the boat yesterday. Do me a favor and check him out. Toga, we're being tailed. Let him pass us. He could easily pull away from us on that bike. Let's take a look at him. Give him a touch of the siren. Hmm? He's slowing down. Look out, Tiger, he's got a gun. The man's got a gun. Get him! Smart work. You train your men to jump out of moving cars. Pity he had to kill him. He had no choice. Let's take a look at him. That's the man who put my pocket on the train. Uh, and here is your wallet, Bondosan. Thanks. Everything seems to be still there. And a notebook. Ah. All my movements for the past week and all the stopping places on our journey. Uh, you are simply described as a Gijin. Uh, but he could have telephoned a description. This is a most unfortunate business. I apologize most deeply. I will naturally absolve you from your mission. That is entirely my fault for being so confident. But at least you have seen an example of the measures Dr. Shadahan takes for his protection. Uh, this is either a great madman or a great criminal. Looks like it. I'm really quite keen to have a sight of the fellow. And don't worry about the mission. This was probably just the jolt I needed to get the wind under my tail. Ah, quite impressive, Superintendent. You build up a thoroughly comprehensive aerial photo of the whole promontory. Even Dr. Shatterhand can't prevent us flying aircraft over his territory. Uh, that is the castle there. The most direct approach to it is on the landward side, as you can see. Uh, but it would be impossible to come that way unobserved. And on the seaward side? How high are the cliffs? About 200 feet. And the whole line of the cliffs is encased in stone, making it part of a castle wall. What are those? Uh, gun ports. And watchtowers at regular intervals. What's the drop down from the walls into the park? About ten feet. And this five-storied affair is the castle, I take it. Looks like a stage set for Dracula. I might as well try to storm Windsor Castle single-handed. How am I supposed to get into the place? Are you a good swimmer? I can swim well enough. 
And you could easily scale the cliff wall. But how do I get to the base of it? Where do I start from? There is an Ama Island only half a mile out to sea. It is called Kuro. What's an Ama Island? Uh, there are about 50 of them around the coast of Japan. The Ama are a tribe whose girls die for a wabi shell. Clam. They are great delicacy. The girl dive naked. Some of them are very beautiful. But they keep themselves very much to themselves and visitors are discouraged. It all sounds quite intriguing. But if they're that cagey about visitors... Uh, the superintendent is distantly related to a family on Kuro. A most interesting family. Uh, they have a daughter. Her name is Kissy Suzuki. Kissy? Mm. She was quite a celebrity. When she was 17, she was asked to go out to Hollywood. They wanted a Japanese diving girl of great beauty. She made the film, but she hated Hollywood. She could have made a fortune, but she chose to return to this obscure island. The press called her the Japanese Gabo. Now she is 23, and everyone has forgotten about her. I have arranged for you to stay with the family. The Shinto priest who rules the island will see that you are accepted by the community. Okay, so I swim out and scale the castle wall. Then what do I do? You hide in the grounds and wait for an opportunity to kill the doctor. As I told you, he goes about in armor. A man in armor is very vulnerable. You only have to knock him off his feet. Then you can throttle him with the ninja chain you'll be wearing around your waist. If his wife is with him, you will throttle her too. She is certainly involved in this business, and anyway, she is too ugly to live. Mm. Then you will escape over the wall and swim back to Kuro. It all sounds very simple. What about the poisonous plants and reptiles and such? I don't want to be blinded or go mad. Uh, the ninja clothing will give you complete protection and swimming goggles will protect your eyes. My dear tiger, you've thought of everything. But I'd much rather have a little gun. Oh, that would be crazy, Bondo-san. You know perfectly well that silence will be essential. No, my friend, use ninjutsu. It is the surest way of eliminating Dr. Shalahan. Have you got a photograph of this chap's face? I think we have a copy of his passport photograph. If I'm going to kill this man in cold blood, I should at least know what my victim looks like. Uh, here you are. Thanks. God Almighty. Blofeld. Is something the matter? Have you got one of the women? Uh, yes. Here it is. Thanks. What is it, Bondosan? Do you know these people? Lord, no. I... It's just that when I saw this man's face, it was as if someone had walked over my grave. If you don't mind, I'd like a little time to myself before we leave. I need to think this thing through. Blow felt. It's a private matter now. Nothing to do with Magic 44 or Tanaka. It is a matter of Blow felt and me. He must have gone off his head. But there is a kind of logic in seeking refuge in a country which has an unquenchable thirst for the terrible and the bizarre and the cruel. And the whole infernal idea is on Blofeld's usual grand scale, the scale of Caligula or Nero or Hitler. Blofeld, the enemy of mankind. And what have I got to kill him with? Nothing but my bare hands and a chain of steel. Wondosan, Wondosan. And it's time for us to set out for the island. You seem preoccupied. Oh, think of all of those beautiful naked women you'll be swimming with. Eh? And this Japanese gabo with whom you'll be passing the night. I have spoken to the priest. There will be no difficulty. The village elders will be told that you are a famous gaijin anthropologist who has come to study the Ama way of life. You are requested to behave in a sincere manner. Which means you are not to go to bed with the girls. Your name will be Taro Todoroki. Taro means first son, and Todoroki, thunder. The priest is not interested in your real name. And now, it is time to go down to the jetty. The boats will be coming in. Everyone goes to meet them and wrap the girls in hot blankets. It is quite a ritual. They're beautiful. They're absolutely beautiful. And that tall girl, at least she's taller than the others. That is a Kissy Suzuki. 
The priest says that the father and mother of Kishi Suzuki would be honored to receive you in their humble abode. The priest asks if you can row a boat. The father is stricken with rheumatism. It would be of great assistance to the family if you would deign to take his place. And please tell his reverence that I would be pleased to row the family boat or to help in anything. And now you must meet the family. Remember that you must not bow too low. They are only women. My name is Kisi Suzuki. You don't have to bow to me, and I shall never bow to you. How do you do? My name is Taro Todoroki. It's very kind of your family to accept me as a guest, but I don't want to be an imposition. Are you sure it's all right? Whatever the priest says is all right. Say goodbye to your distinguished friends from Tokyo, and we can go home. I hope you're good at peeling potatoes. I took a degree in it. Bondo-san, I am certain that you will succeed, so I will not wish you luck, nor will I say sayonara. I will simply say a quiet banzai to you and give you this little present in case the gods frown upon your venture and through no fault of your own, things go wrong. No, thank you, Tiger. You remember the haiku. You only live twice. If my second life comes up, I would rather look it in the face and not turn my back on it. See you in about a week. Come on then, Todoroki-san, and give me one of those little bags to carry. For the sake of the villagers who will be watching inquisitively, we will wear the oriental face in public. Thank you. What time do we take out the boat? About 5.30, when the sun comes up. Perhaps you will bring me luck. Good morning, Kissy. A beautiful day for fishing. You have slept well? Like the dead. What's that extraordinary thing you're wearing? This is ceremonial dress for diving, in the presence of important strangers. The priest instructed me to wear it in your company, as a mark of respect, of course. I don't believe a word of it, Kissy. The truth of the matter is that you consider that your nakedness might arouse dishonourable thoughts in my impious Western mind. That is a most unworthy suspicion. However, I accept the delicacy of your respect of my susceptibilities. <laughs> and now, let's get going. We'll beat the Awabi record today. How many should we aim at? Fifty would be good. A hundred would be wonderful. But above all, you must draw well and not let me down. Not much further. That's just as well. We shall have the place to ourselves. The seaweed is thick on the rocks down there. And that is what the Arby feed on. It is deep, about 40 feet, but I can stay down for almost a minute, long enough to pick up two or three Arby, if I can find them. Now we are there. Stop crying. The rope goes around my waist. Now keep it taut. And you feel me, Tag? Pull me up quickly. Right. Pass me the goggles. No! She's like a fish. I hope I'll be able to put up some sort of show when it's my turn. True. Great fat ones. There are lots of them down there. Good. I shall rest now. Shall I try? No. We will have lunch first. There's a bowl in the box over there. What is it? Rice and seaweed. And you must give David a piece of fish. Kissy, do you know anything about the castle on the headland? We never talk of it. It is almost a forbidden subject on Kuro. It is as if hell had suddenly opened its mouth half a mile away across the sea. We believe the devil himself has come to live over there. The elders say that he is the incarnation of all the evil in the West. Do they now? 
and there is already a legion that has grown up on the island. It is that Ajizo guardian will send a man from across the sea to slay this king of death, as we call him. Who are these guardians? On the other side of the island, on the foreshore, there are five statues. They are rather frightening to see. They have rough bodies of stone and round stones for heads. They were put there centuries ago by our ancestors. They sit on a line of low tide, and as the tide comes up, it covers them completely, and they keep watch under the surface of the sea and protect us. And this story of the man from across the sea, where did it come from? Who knows? Now give me your watch. It is time for you to see for yourself what it is like diving for Arvi. Oh, I feel as if I'd been beaten with a wooden truncheon. I ache everywhere it's possible to ache. <laughs> we caught 65 Arvi. That is very good. Little thanks to me. Too much sake and too many cigarettes. You caught 10. That is very good for a beginner. <laughs> ah! What's the matter? A cramp. A cramp in my stomach. Oh, quickly, take off your shorts. What? And lie face down on the ground. W what are you going to do? I'm going to walk over your back. Lie still. Ah! Does that help? Ah. Are the cramps going? Uh, yes, I think so. Good. When I have finished, I shall give you a hot bath, Ooh. and then you will have a very early night. Ah. Oh, oh, oh. Todoroki-san! Todoroki-san! What is it? Is it time to go fishing already? It is time, but there will be no fishing today. It is too stormy. I must have slept for ten hours. There is something you should know. The priest came last night to say that the people came here yesterday on the boat from the mainland. They asked many questions. What about? They wanted to know about the visit of the men from Tokyo. They said they were guards from the castle, and it was their duty to prevent trespassers. They said that three men came out to Kuro, and only two returned. And what were they told? The priest told them that one of the visitors had been taken ill, and had perhaps lain down in a boat on the journey back. A crafty old devil. Have the guards gone back? The priest sent a boy up to the high place on the island, which looks down on the castle. The boat returned there. I see. Todoroki-san, I have a feeling of much friendship for you. I feel that there are secret things between the priest and you, and that they concern the castle. I think you should tell me enough to put me out of my unhappiness. You are very beautiful and kind, Kissy. Lead me up to the high place from which I can see the castle, and I will tell you what I can. I was going to anyway, for I'm going to need your help. What an evil place. I have never been here before. The people of the island have no wish to see what happens in the castle. They are frightened. I don't blame them. The castle looks like something out of a nightmare. And the garden. And what are those strange pits where the steam is rising? Those must be the fumaroles. What are they? Holes where sulphur bubbles up out of the earth. The smell is foul, even from here. Kissy. Tonight I have to swim out to that castle and climb the wall and get inside. You are the man from across the sea who has come to destroy the dragon from the west. Yes, Kissy, I am. But why have you been chosen? Why should he not be a Japanese? Because it is better that this man is killed by someone from the west. It will cause less trouble for the state if the whole matter is presented as being trouble between foreigners. And, and after, will you come back and be my boatman again? For a time. And then I must go back to England. No, I believe that you will stay for a long time on Kuro. Why do you believe that? Because I prayed for it at the shrine. And I have never asked for such a big thing before. I'm sure it will be granted. I shall be swimming with you tonight. No, Kissy. It's too dangerous. You will need a company in the dark. And I know the currents. You will not get there without me. 
Now it is time for us to see the guardians. The tide is running out, and they will want to inspect you. They have no faces, which somehow makes them look more powerful. Why are they wearing white shirts? We dress the stones every year at the beginning of the diving season, and we sing to them to make them happy and favorable towards us. In my country, centuries ago, the Crusaders used to kneel down and ask God's blessing before setting out. Then why don't you pray? I can't do that. I can only ask for good fortune to accompany my enterprise. <gasps> Did you see that? All is well, Tadarukzan. Did you see them nod their heads? No, Kissy, I did not. <sighs> this is close enough to the foot of the castle wall. I'm going to hide the flippers in this crack just above the high water mark, and I must start my climb. But would you be seen by the guards? I don't imagine that the guards patrol the grounds at night. They need to give the suicides free entry. And now. You must leave me, Kissy. Look for me in a day or two. I shall look for you every day, Todorokson. Bye. And now for the dragon's castle. It doesn't look much of a climb, and the cracks between the stone blocks should give me enough grip. Flight of steps leading down into the garden from the gunport. Come into the garden, Maud, for the black bat. Night hath flown. God knows what kind of bats Blofeld has in his garden. Vampires, probably. It smells sickly sweet. The smell of death. And the bubbling noise must be the fumaroles. Thank God, there's a moon. What I need is a hideout. Somewhere I can use as a base camp. A snake. What are the snakes that really go for man? It's like playing Russian roulette with all the chambers loaded. A lean-to shed, just the job, and full of gardener's tools. Pull these sacks forward. It's quite a handy hiding place. It might give me shelter for an hour or two at least. At first, I'd better take a turn round the estate. The castle, where the dragon sleeps in his lair. How the hell am I supposed to get into that? Walk up to the front door and ring the bell. Aren't castles supposed to have another way in, or a way out, where his lordship could slip away quietly if things weren't going according to plan, somewhere underneath the drawbridge? And the good doctor's castle is no exception, with only a chain and padlock to secure the door. What the hell's that? It's over by the lake. God Almighty! His head swollen up like a pumpkin, poisoned by one of Blofeld's pretty shrubs. He's making for the lake. God no! Piranha fish, hundreds of them. The doctor's banquet of death. Why don't the Japanese air force come and bomb this place into eternity? Set the whole place ablaze with napalm? Why do I have to do the job with my own bare hands? Don't you want to kill him? Don't you want to avenge Tracy? Snap out of it! Get back to the hut and wait until dawn. Blofeld's breakfast gong, and the guards are turning out, going to comb through the bushes for the night's bag. They're certainly getting worked up about something. They've rooted out some poor wretch who's had second thoughts about killing himself. They're going to throw the poor devil in the lake. What's so amusing? Only some poor peasant who did not want to die, my lord. I hope you changed his mind. Carry on with your duties. 
Blofeld, a knight in shining armor, like something out of a kabuki play. I could make a quick dash and pitch him into his own lake. I wonder if the piranhas could get through the chinks in his chainmail. The fish make tidy housekeepers. And the dumpy creature with the beekeeper's veil and rubber boots must be Irma Bunt, Blofeld's consort. The woman who helped him kill Tracy. And the sea and the sharks see to the rest. The sharks don't always complete the job. That spy we put through the Christian room was almost intact when he found his body down the coast. Oh? The lake would have been a better place for him. We don't want that policeman from Fukuoka coming here too often. Kono tells me there are already mutterings in the papers about the public inquiry into our activities here. And what shall we do then, lieber Ernst? We shall obtain massive compensation and move on. The same pattern can be repeated in other countries. Everywhere there are people who want to kill themselves. But the figures would be much smaller. It is the concept that matters, lieber Erna. It is very difficult to invent something that is entirely new in the history of the world. And I have done that. That is true. You have built a shrine to death forevermore. It is as if one of the great fairy tales come to life. A sort of Disneyland of death. A what? Oh, on an altogether grander, more poetic scale, of course. One day I shall write the whole story down, and then perhaps the world will acknowledge the type of man who has been living amongst them. A man not only unhonored and unsung, but a man who they hunt down and wish to shoot like a dog. A man who has to use all his vials just to stay alive. He's mad. Stark staring mad. If I had not covered my tracks so well, there'd be spies on every here even now to hand us over for official murder under their stupid laws. Or to kill us out of hand. I'll kill you in your sleep if I have to. That hut there. The door is open. God Almighty. I have told them in a thousand times to keep such places locked. It is a perfect refuge for a spy or a fugitive. I will make sure. Take care, Ernst. <laughs> Nothing is a match for a samurai sword. <laughs> Nothing. But remind me to reprimand Kono and to make sure a proper lock is fitted. Come. Let us see what new delights await us. No bones broken, but it was a near thing. That's the end of my hideout. So it will have to be tonight. Nine o'clock. The only sign of life in the castle seems to be on the third floor. So that's what I've got to make for. And that must be the warning helium balloon tethered to the balustrade with a streamer carrying the skull and crossbones. A warning to keep out, or an invitation to come in. Let's hope I can crack that padlock. Not much difficulty there, and no bolts on the other side. Won't you walk into my parlour, said the spider to the fly. I seem to be in some kind of cellar. Bats, but no other sign of life. And a great stone staircase going straight up into the castle. Sixty-two steps and a wide double door. I must be on the main floor by now. And the door looks pretty worn. No light on the other side. A quick twist with a jemmy and... And that room across the hall with the light shining through must be the dragon's lair. The ride of the Valkyries. Thank you, Blofeld. Even if there's a nightingale floor between me and you, no one will hear with all that racket going on. I think he is coming round. What are those strange clothes he was wearing, Kono? It is a ninja suit, hey, Doctor. These are people who practice the secret arts of ninjutsu. These people used to be much feared in Japan. This man has undoubtedly been sent to assassinate you, my lord. But for the trap in the passage, he might well have succeeded. Do lieber Gott. 
It cannot be. What is it, my dear? The scar down the right cheek. The eyebrows have been shaved to give an oriental look. But I am sure it is him. What do you mean? This is the English agent, James Bond. The man whose wife you killed, I swear it. You have got to believe me. I certainly see a resemblance, but how has he got here? How has he found me? Who sent him? The Japanese Secret Service. I cannot believe it. If that was so, they would have come with warrants to arrest me. We must proceed with great circumspection and extract the whole truth from this man. Yeah. First, we must find out if he is truly deaf and dumb. Kono, take this man to the question room. Aye. A disgusting stench of sulphur. A large clock with the quarters underlined in red. And a stone pedestal seat with a hole in it, which it seems I'm to sit on. No instruments of torture. And high up in the ceiling above me, an opening through which I can see the stars. Commander Bond, or 007... I made a dash for it. I might just get my hands round his throat. You are now sitting directly above a geyser that throws mud at a heat of 1,000 degrees centigrade, a distance of approximately 100 feet into the air. Your body is now 50 feet above its source. The geyser erupts at exactly each 15th minute in each hour. You will therefore observe that you have exactly four minutes before the next eruption. If you are a deaf and dumb Japanese, as you maintain, you will not move from that chair, and at the 15th minute past 11, you will suffer a most dreadful death by the incineration of your lower body. You prefer not to give up the play-acting? Very well. On the off chance that your papers may perhaps be partially correct, my guard will now repeat what I have said in Japanese. Not a very attractive proposition on the face of it. There's a small wooden box by the side of my throne. It must be the regulating valve for the geezer. It might come in useful somewhere, but not now. 11.14. Time to move, unless you want a flush of volcanic mud up your backside, James. Very sensible, Commander Bond. Well, Blofeld, you mad bastard. Your effects man certainly knows his stuff. You are quite right, my dear Elmer. Yeah, yeah. I shall pay more attention to your judgment in future. Go now. Uh, go down and search the gardens. He might have brought accomplices. Aye. All that remains, Mr. Bond, is for you to talk, and then you will receive an honourable and quick death by the sword. Have no misgivings. I am an expert with it, and it is razor sharp. Blofeld, you were never stupid. Many people in London and Tokyo know of my presence here tonight. Retribution will certainly follow if I do not return. All right, Mr. Bond. But I'm so sure of my facts that I'm going to kill you here and now. My fine sword has not yet been blooded. Yours will be an admirable head to cut its teeth on. You agree, my Liebchen? Of course. What you decide is always correct. But be careful. This... Animal is dangerous. You forget, mein Liebchen. Since last January, he has ceased to be an animal. By a simple stroke of surgery on the woman he loved, I reduced him to human dimensions. Let me show you. I suppose you know you're both as mad as hatters. So is Frederick the Great. So is Nietzsche. We are in good, illustrious company. On the other One hand, of the guards has left his wooden stave over by the wall. If I could only get to it, I could put up some kind of fight. But the woman standing close to it, so she'll have to go first. You fool! You will only suffer a lingering death. I shall hack you to pieces. I wouldn't be so sure, Blofeld. I'll slice you limb from limb. Your little stick won't help you. I'll cut it into matchwood. <laughs> it's time you lost your little toy, Blofeld. <laughs> what kind of man are you without a sword? I don't need a sword, Blofeld. I'm going to kill you with my bare hands. Now, Blofeld, die. Die. Damn you. Die. 
There was something else I had to do. What was it? The geezer. Close off the valve, and in a few minutes the geezer will blow the whole place to smithereens. Oh. Pity about Irma. But she'll have to go up with it. That should do it. Two minutes to go. But how the hell am I going to get away? The helium balloon on the terrace. Untether it and hold onto the rope. It's my only chance. You only live twice. Once when you were born, and once when you look death in the face. of the Times will have learned from earlier reports. A senior officer of the Ministry of Defence, Commander James Bond, CMG, RNVR, is missing, believed killed, while on an official mission to Japan. It grieves me to report that hopes of his survival must now be abandoned. It therefore falls to my lot to give some account of this officer and of his outstanding service to his country. James Bond was born of a Scottish father, Andrew Bond of Glencoe, and a Swiss mother, Monique Delacroix, from the canton de Vaud. His father being a father... Can't you remember anything? You do not remember who you are or where you come from? Nothing. Nothing. Except a man's face. I think he was dead. I think he was a bad man. What is your name? My name is Kisi Suzuki, and you are my lover. We live on this island and go fishing together. You have a terrible wound on the side of your head. You must have fallen while you were climbing the cliffs after seagulls' eggs. The nature of Commander Bond's duties with the Ministry, which were incidentally recognized by the appointment of the CMG in 1954, must remain secret. But his colleagues at the Ministry... I love him, Kanlish san He remembers nothing of the past. Nothing at all of his former life. I told him he came here from another island years ago. I wish to keep him and care for him and marry him. <sighs> that will not be possible, my daughter. In due course, he will recover and go off across the world to where he came from. And there will be official inquiries about him from Fukuoka. And even from Tokyo. But you could instruct the elder to say nothing. If the day comes when he wishes to leave, I will not hinder him. But in the meantime, should Nakura honor the hero who was brought to us by the gods? James Bond was briefly married in 1962 to Teresa, only daughter of Marc Ange Draco of Marseille. The marriage ended in tragic circumstances. He is fully restored to health. But I cannot get him to respond to me. However much I press myself against him or caress him with my hands, he remains indifferent. Ah, that is why you come to Happy Shop. Yes. Has his wound made him impotent, do you think? It's just possible. He may have forgotten how to perform act of love. You have money? How much? Five thousand yen. Yes, if you really think... Ah, this file contains liquid from sweat glands of four toes. And this is powder of dried lizard. A combination of two mixed into your other's food should prove <laughs> invaluable. Thank you. However, to make doubly sure and for extra thousand yen, I provide you with excellent pillow book. What is a pillow book? See for yourself. Very well. I'll take it. That was a fantastic meal, Kissy. What do you call it? Skiaki. You always liked it. What's this book? How on earth did you come by this? It is what we call a pillow book. Lovers use them. And the picture's strange. Kissy, take off your clothes and lie down. We'll start at page one.
Vladivostok. What did you say? Vladivostok. I found the name on one of the pieces of paper in the privy. It has some kind of message for me. I connect it with a very big country. I believe that country is called Russia. Am I right? Yes, Tarosa. That is so. I have a feeling that I have much to do with this Russia, that a lot of my past was concerned with it. I must go to this place, Vladivostok, and perhaps it will awaken memories of my life before I came here. Will you help me, Kissy? Yes, I will help you, Tarosan. But you must take care, for the Russians are not friendly people. Surely they would not harm a fisherman from Kuro. Soon, I must go there. But let us go down to the boat and find David. It is a wonderful day for fishing. Vladivostok. That was You Only Live Twice by Ian Fleming, dramatised for radio by Michael Bakewell. The part of James Bond was played by Michael Jaston and Tanaka by Clive Merrison. Henderson, James Lawrenson, M. David King, Kissy, Sayo Inaba, Ando, Bert Kwok, Irma, Maxine Audley, Blofeld, Ronald Herdman, Maloney, Michael Turner, Trembling Leaf, Daniel Allen, Tracy, Emma Gregory, Mariko, Tara Dominic, and Kono, Mark Straker. Other parts were played by the Radio Drama Company. Technical presentation by Tim Sturgeon, Anne Bunting, and Alison Carter. The play was directed by Michael Bakewell.